Hey, it's Elvin here again with a tutorial on how you can use the Cheetah 5.0 firmware built on Marlin by K3D Labs on your 3D printer if you have a supported board, supported components, and even if you don't have a supported board or components, we're going to teach you how you can use Cheetah 5.0 on your 3D printer. Here's what you're going to learn to achieve today, so stick around. If you've never downloaded Cheetah 5.0 before, have no idea what I'm talking about, you really want to download Cheetah either on our website at k3d.com or at GitHub, especially if you're having problems editing and compiling Marlin. So on our website, you will go to the firmware section where you will see the Cheetah 5.0 firmware. You will also see a flashing guide. If you have an 8-bit board and you want to learn about flashing, uh, this is going to be a very comprehensive guide on bootloader flashing, uh, especially if you have an 8-bit board like I mentioned. And you will see our Core XY machine firmware. So you really want to be checking out uh, Cheetah 5.0 firmware. Apart from this video, we have also extra resources such as uh, NV, uh, a visual guide. Uh, right here, if you have a 32-bit board, you're going to click this one. And if you have an 8-bit board, you're going to click this. Uh, both links will give you the same download options for Cheetah 5.0, so you don't have to worry. So Cheetah 5.0 will always be updated, and each and every board will get the same uh, type of custom menu that we have, and of course the same type of Marlin uh, updates that Vanilla Marlin actually provides. Uh, but Vanilla Marlin is at uh, version 2.0.3 right now, and as soon as uh, there are new versions, it's our commitment at K3D Labs to always keep Cheetah 5.0 are as updated as possible. So if you go through this guide, you will find that there's a download compiler. In this video, we're going to be compiling Cheetah 5.0 on Visual Studio. If you do not have Visual Studio, all right, I urge you to download the compiler. If you click it up, you'll see the compiler, you'll see instructions all right, on how you can download uh, Visual Studio for Mac, for Windows, and the specific instructions on what you should click uh, to see this, this, this little guy pop out so that we can continue with the uh, installation. So it takes some time. If you don't have Visual Studio installed, please install it now. And since we already have it, we're not going to uh, download it again. Uh, but instead, I'm going to show you that this is where you're going to download Cheetah 5.0. You can download it directly from our website or you can download it from GitHub. Now for this case, we are going to download it from GitHub. So we're gonna click and right here at GitHub. So on GitHub, GitHub's page, at our link, you will see a clone or download button. What you wanna do is to download, not open in desktop unless you have a uh, GitHub desktop application installed and you know what's going on with that. Otherwise, you're gonna hit on the download button. So download it and we really recommend that you either save it on your desktop or if you are on a Windows PC, you really want to be saving this at the root C drive uh, of your Windows PC so that when you unzip it later, uh, we'll have less complications, which I will go more into it uh, at a later time. So once you save it, we have already downloaded this, so we're going to skip this. So you're going to hit the save button if you uh, never had Cheetah 5.0 downloaded on your computer. Back to Visual Studio. This is the first thing we're going to do. We're going to click File and then we're going to click Open. On a Visual Studio, on a Windows PC, this is going to be Open Folder instead. So you want to click on Open Folder. If you're on Windows, you're going to click on Open. If you're on Visual Studio, on Mac, like we do. So you're going to click on Open. And you're going to go to Desktop, and you're going to find the file. All right, This file should have been unzipped. Now, if your file is not unzipped yet, please unzip the file. If you're on Windows, unzip it, uh, unzip it to your root C drive. And on the Mac, you can unzip it on your desktop. For our case, we unzipped it on desktop and we're going to open it by double clicking on this file. Now, on this screen, you'll realize that there's build root, there's configuration, there's a K3D folder, and of course, there's a platformio.ini file. This is the correct screen that you should be looking for. There's no reason to click uh, build root config data to go one level in. So on this screen, what you want to do is click open. Once you click open, Marlin is just going to open up. We don't need this at all. And PIO Home, PIO home uh, Tab Formula is going to open up and it's going to show you an, a 
assortment of files that you may be very confused. PIO Home, you can close it. You don't need it right now. All right. So now all these things have just been opened, but we're going to take you step by step on what is required to edit and compile your Marlin. So you're going to click on, the first thing you're going to click is this Marlin uh, tab right here, and you're going to open up three files. These three files are where we're going to be doing our changes, uh, most of them. And the first file we're going to open is configuration.h. You open these files by double clicking on them, and then you realize that tabs like this start opening up. This is the first one. The second one we'll be opening is configuration underscore adv.h. Same thing, we'll double click on it. And the third one is this file right here at the bottom on your left sidebar, platformio.ini. There you go. All right, so Cheeto 5.0 is simply designed that can take you from top to bottom in a total of 15 or 16 sections, depending on how updated Cheetah 5.0 is. At the moment, at version 1.2.2, Cheetah 5.0 has a total of 15 sections, and they all start from section 1. At the top of configuration H, these are just a readme uh, information for you. If you want to read it, please do. If you don't, you can just follow this video. All right, so you'll see a debugging mode right here. We have a video that talks about debugging mode. If your VS Code doesn't compile, debugging mode is going to help you with it. We're not going to go through it since we this video is about compiling Cheetah 5.0. And you'll see a bunch of include folders right here. These things are not available on Vanilla Marlin. These are our own files. You can ignore them completely. And you'll see a fancy setup wizard. All right. So most of you folks have, have told us that this wizard is helpful. Just know that this wizard still requires an input uh, from you, from the end user, in order for Cheetah 5.0. To compile successfully. Now let's start with section 1. Section 1 is right here, it's called section 1a. If you ever get lost and if your VS Code starts in the middle of nowhere, you can find section 1 by uh, by using Control F or Command F on a Mac and look for section 1. So it will bring you right to section 1. In our case, you'll be section 1a right here, section 1. That's if you ever get lost, alright? So section 1, it says, choose your board type. Cheetah 5.0 is integrated with all these motherboards. It looked like a lot, isn't it? For 5-sec motherboards, we actually have 4. So we have 1, 1A, 1.1A, 1.1B, 1.2A, so on. And of course, we have the 8-bit board support from Creality. If you have the Ender 3, 3 Pro and Ender 5. And of course, we have Original Creality 2, which we call it that supports the Sierra 10S, 10S5, and the 5 Plus. And of course, those are notably 80 Mega 2560 bots. If you have the popular Big 3 Tech, SKR, E3 Mini 1.2, you're in luck because we, Cheetah 5.0 supports that as well. And of course, if you have the equally popular SKR 1.3, we have that. GTR V1.0 is still in the works, but 1.4, 1.4 Turbo, even for the new, sorry, the old, it's a relatively old one, the E3 Deep V10 is also available, Pro V1.1, if you have that version, and the non-Pro, the difference is between Pro and non-Pro 1.1 is also supported. And of course, if you are, if you have an MK, MKS Gen, v, Gen LV1 board, that is also supported. Now, if your board is not supported here, don't worry. Let us know in the comments that that you know you 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 know of a lot of people who are using this board. Uh, talk to us and let us know what boards you would like us to integrate next, and then we will you know try try our best to help you out. So, in this tutorial, we're going to be using uh, Big Tree Tech SKR E3 Mini V 1.2 as an example in order to choose the motherboard for Cheetah. It's relatively straightforward. All you have to do find your board and go to define and you are just going to remove the comments. Now as soon as you do this, you realize that the color changes and this is Platformio's way or VS Code's way to tell you that this code is now live. Alright, to finish this part, we are going to look at this and we're going to scroll right down and you'll see information about your board. You'll see that this file, wrong sorry, this board that you have chosen actually 
has something called a change value. It says change value equals to STM 32F, etc. Now you're gonna take this and you're gonna copy it again. Control F on Windows and Command F on a Mac. Sorry, Control C on a Windows and Command C on a Mac. And you're gonna use this value in platform you dot ini. All right. So remember the file that we opened. The third file that we opened is right here. And you realize, scroll down and you see a change value. Change value associated with default underscore envs. You're gonna Control V or Command V on a Mac. The values that you copied. And now that you're done with this, you are done with this file. All right, don't close it yet. Just gonna leave it hanging right there. And then we'll go to section 1B. Section 1B is next. And in this section, this is where you define your controller type. All right, so usually there are more than two controllers provided uh, by Marlin, but according to the printers that we actually support at the moment, uh, only these two are relatively important. If you have an ender tree, you would really want to define CR10 underscore stock display, especially if you are on a mini E3 B1.2 board. If you have a SKR 1.4 turbo board, or even a normal SKR 1.4, you would want to be defining this guy instead. All right. Since we are using the E3 B1.2 as an example, we'll be using this. And then if you scroll down, it says debugging mode, and it says ignore this. So we're going to ignore this. Section 2. TMC drivers of the SKR Mini E3 V1.2 are TMC 2209s. And that is exactly what we're going to do. All right, so it says change value, and we are going to replace change value with it. TMC 2209. All right, you can just Command C or Control C if you want. And you're going to paste them like that. All right, that's all. Section 2. In Section 3, right, it says choose your printer name by uncommenting on it. All right, so if you have an Ender 3, you are going to highlight Ender 3. If you have an Ender 5, of course, you're going to highlight Ender 5. Now, what happens if you don't have any of this? All right, what happens if you have a uh, Inet A6? What happens if you, if you have a CR10 S4 or if you have a CR10 S5? The good news is as long as you know your printer parameters, uh, you will be able to input them into Cheetah 5.0 and Cheetah 5.0 is going to automatically take care of the rest of the details for you. So let's say we have a custom printer. All right. So for our own records, we're going to save Marlin later on. We're going to call this custom printer. And let's say we're going to call uh, define uh, custom printer for CRS5, then S5 for Cheetah. 5.0. All right, so that's that's only for your record. You don't have to key it. It's not compulsory. Don't worry. So now that you define custom printer, Cheetah 5.0 will require you to input your parameters. All right. So if you have a custom printer, you really want to be using all this. So if you have an X min plug, Y min plug, Z min plug, and you're gonna input your bit size, etc. All right. All this information are information that you should change. Of course, we have a complete tutorial about custom printers, so we're not going to go through it right now. And we're going to go through, uh, or rather, we're going to go back to what this purpose of the tutorial uh, truly is, is for preset printers. So we're going to comment uh, custom printer out again, and then we're going to choose Ender 3. All right, for this uh, explanation, for this tutorial, we're going to use Ender 3 uh, as, a, as a choice. Now that we define Ender 3, Cheetah 5.0 knows exactly what is the bit size. Uh, how high it should go and the end stop states etc so cheetah 5.0 will automatically do that for you without you inputting your own values section four how many extruders do you have usually on a normal machine like an ender tree and in it uh an a8 even a prusa only has one extruder so one extruder if you have and of course if your filament diameter is 1.75 that is something you want to keep as as default if you're using something else, of course, if you're using 3.0 as a diameter, you really want to uh, comment out 1.75 and then uh, activate 3.0 by removing the comments. For this case, we have 1.75 by Ender 3, so that's what we're going to uh, leave it to. X at section 6, this is where you choose the extruder type, and this is where people get really confused. All right. And the regular is the usual plastic extruder with a single hop, all right, that comes with Creality machines like the Ender 3 
and Ender 5. So if you have a usual uh, Ender regular extruder, this is what you're going to choose. If, however, you have bought something from Amazon, from AliExpress, that has a metal dual drive. These are a bit more tricky. Metal dual drive actually has more E-steps. Alright, it has 140 E-steps thereabout as compared to a Ender regular. Now, even if you choose the wrong one, so let's say you have a uh, you have a dual drive, but instead you choose a zesty nipple instead. Alright, when this happens, don't worry, Cheetah 5.0 will still be able to compile. However, uh, your extruder steps are gonna be off, but that's what that's something that you can change later on. So if you know your extruder, please choose it carefully. For our case, we have a metal dual drive, so that's what we're gonna choose. And of course, if you have a C, 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 and C, easier extruder, what a mouthful. Alright, that's something you want to choose. So you should only have one extruder. If you have more, that's something else that can be configured in Cheetah but not covered in this video. And of course, we told you that uh, Cheetah is highly versatile. So if you can define a custom printer, you will be able to define a custom extruder. So if you have a custom extruder, and for example, your custom extruder uh, has 596 E-steps as opposed to 93. So for this example, we're going to use a uh, custom extruder. And then you're going to do this right here. If enable custom extruder, you're going to change change value. Now you will realize that change value is used a lot in Cheetah 5.0. So if you ever see this, you probably, there's a very high chance that you need to change something. So if you have a change value, we're going to change it to 593. Now when this happens, it's going to, Cheetah 5.0 is going to uh, automatically compile telling Marlin that, hey, you know, we, this, this this printer actually has 593 E-steps that we need to rotate, all right? But since we are compiling it for the Ender tree, we're going to go back, all right? So we don't need change extruder, uncomment it, come down here, and then we're going to choose Ender regular, all right? So in section 7, all right, don't be confused. This is where you're going to choose your hot end, all right? Regardless of whether you are using a Sidewinder, an E3D V6, a Volcano, a Hamera, even the Slice Mosquito, uh, Mosquito by Slice Engineering, of course, or even the uh, stock hot end Mark 8 from Creality, we have all gotten you covered. If you have the stock hot end, put it here, right? This will allow Cheetah 5.0 to automatically choose the correct thermistor values so that you have the correct readings all the time when you're printing. Of course, if you have a custom hot end right here, this is what you want to do, and you're going to change your thermistor value. Usually they are 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Alright, but since we don't have a custom hot end in this tutorial, we are going to leave it as default. So uncomment custom hot end, comment mark 8 hot end, and in section 8, we're almost there. This is going to be choosing your heater bit that you are using. All right, for the Ender tree, you're going to be using this. All right, of course, if you have a Sidewinder, something else. Now, what happens if you have a AC heater bit? Uh, what happens if you have something fancy from Amazon, again, from AliExpress? Usually, you will have the thermistor values. All right, if you have a custom heater bit, do the same thing. Uncomment your custom heater bit. Change the value here to whatever value this 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 thing is. All right. So, for this case, we're going to be using the Ender tree heater bit. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to uncomment it and we're going to leave it here. All right. In section nine A, do you have an auto bit leveling sensor installed? All right. For this case, we're going to bring you through it. If you don't have an auto bit leveling sensor, like the Kava sensor that we're selling. Or even the BL Touch that uh, it's it's selling on Amazon, or even any sort of capacitive sensor. If you don't have all those, and all you have is a normal stock printer, all right, this is not something that you will undefined. But because we have those things, and we want auto bit leveling in Cheetah 5.0, we are gonna define auto bit level, all right. In section 9B, it says. Manual mesh bit level. This is a function in Marlin where you can actually automatically configure your printer to compensate for an uneven bit. Alright, uh, there are a lot of videos on YouTube that are fantastic that goes over manual mesh bit level. If, that, if that's something that you want, you can always define it. But when you do, 
we suggest that you turn off auto bait leveling. All right, if you have auto bait leveling, please do not enable manual mesh bait leveling. And this is cheetah specific, just to ensure that the codes compound and they will work uh, in the most optimal position. All right, so if you have the cover sensor that we're selling, it's a capacitive sensor, you'll be uncommenting this. It's called a fixed mounted probe, which is a capacitive sensor. All right, if however, you have a BL touch and you realize that if you flip the back of the BL touch, you realize that the mini PCB states that it's a version 3 and a version 3.1. You can activate BL touch by doing this. All right. If you only, if and only you have a BL touch version 3 and version 3.1, you want to uncomment both of these lines. All right. If, however, you have a normal BL touch that is not a version 3 or a 3.1, you can just have defined BL touch enabled. All right. Since, for the purpose of this video, all right, not not since, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to use BL touch, and of course, if you scroll down at section ten A, you realize that all right, so we're going to ignore this line of code and it says, max points for the default for Cheetah five point zero is to have your printer probing sixteen points. How this works is that whatever value you change here, if you change this to three. Marlin is going to allow um, your probe to probe the bed nine times, three times three. It's like a grid. All right. If you change this to four, which we recommend, it's going to probe a total of 16 times. All right. If you are a more advanced user, you want to change the grid points for Y and grid points for X, you can do this if you like. All right. Otherwise, you know, we can move on to the next section and we can leave this as default to four. Multiple probing, this is always useful, especially if uh, you're using uh, BL touch or even uh, the cover sensor or, or any other uh, capacitive sensor. Multiple probing is going to allow your probe to probe multiple times to get a more accurate reading. All right, you can leave it as default and minimum probe edge is how far you want the, the, the sensor to be probing off the edges of your bed. All right, if you find that your probe is too near to the edge of the bed, you want to change it to 20. Or even 30 if required even though we think that 10 is more than adequate and sufficient and if you have manual mesh bit leveling that you activated earlier on the explanation is the same if you find that your nozzle is getting too close to the bed this is something that you want to work on but for our case we're going to leave it as default right. section 12 section 12 is where you define how far the probe is from the nozzle all right so for example, let's show you something from Tangiverse, right? Tangiverse is our favorite site. Alright, oh. So let's say we're gonna go to Hero Me Mount. Everybody's favorite mount on the Ender Tree is called a Hero Me Mount. Alright, so let's say this one. Alright. For CR10 Ender Tree and Pro. Now the sensor to nozzle offset is something that um, you need to be accurate in order for Cheetah 5.0 or Marlin to accurately compensate. Uh, for the unevenness of your bid. Alright, so usually in every uh, Tangiverse uh, page, you will find this for mounts designed for ABL. Alright, so for example, alright, for BL Touch and Micro C's hot end, we are using this. Alright, you're using a sensor and a Creality OEM uh, hot end, which is the Mark 8, right? And you'll see that if you're using a single fan, or single 501 fires up, you're gonna use 45.4 minus 45.4 for X and minus 12 for Y. Alright, so we're gonna copy this value, minus 45.4, go back to Visual Studio, and it says this one change value. Alright, so before that, this is a custom ABL mount. If you're gonna input values here, we have to define custom ABL mount, otherwise it will not work. Alright, do this. Alright, of course, if uh this is what you what, what you have, for example, if you have a pet fang, fan duck, all right, you can do that. You can define your nozzle offsets by just doing this, all right. Otherwise, you can always define a custom ABL mount, which is the easiest by far. This is going to be your X value provided by your Y value, followed by your Y value, sorry. And this is minus 12. So we're going to take this minus 12 right here. We're going to go to Visual Studio right here. And yep, minus 12, minus 45.4, minus 12, and this is zero. If you know your probe offset value for Z, 
please go ahead and enter it. Otherwise, you can do your tuning later. So we'll usually set this as zero. All right. Section 13A, filament change. This is an exciting section. All right. So if you ever want to have advanced pause for your printer, you want to activate this. All right. This allows you to change your filament when your filament runs out. This allows you to change your filament on demand even if your filament doesn't run out. All right, so if you ever activate advanced pause feature, please change the change value here. All right, in our guide, this is what you're supposed to do. All right, in order to find the total filament power change value, you have to measure the distance between your extruder right here and then to the tip of your nozzle. Once you measure this distance, you want to ensure that you put the values in change value. All right, so let's say the total filament path right here is 200 mm. Let's say, for example, you're going to put this as 200. All right, and for this function right here, this is a pretty cool function. All right, if you have advanced pause feature enabled, okay, your printer is going to park itself on the top left, right? Here, right here, this is from Teaching Tech's YouTube channel. Once pause is enabled, your printer is going to park itself right here on the front or top left corner of the bit. If, however, you, you prefer it to be parked on the right instead, right here, this is where you are going to uncomment it. Now, for this case, we are just going to uncomment it for fun and then it's going to allow for a nozzle top right part. Okay, so if you have a filament sensor, you want to enable it. All right, if your filament sensor uh, doesn't work, all right, you can always invert the filament sensor logic right here. Okay, and of course, uh, section 14, we're almost there. Section 14 is where you do most of the changes to your machine. If after compilation of Cheetah 5.0, after flashing your board, you realize that X, Y, and Z are moving in the wrong direction. All right, this is where you're going to invert the functions of x, y, and z. Just one line itself is going to allow the changing of the directional axis of x, y, and z. Of course, if your extruder is going the wrong direction, you want to be inverting this from true to false. All right, on the ender tree, it should be true. If you ever feel the need to change the acceleration of a printer, you can always go ahead and change them right here. And of course, if you want to control the eject or s curve dev acceleration, if you want to turn it off, you can. Otherwise, you can leave them as default. Now, now that we are done with section 14, we're going to look at section 15, All right, which is the last section. And since it says that there's one last step right here, we're going to go to section advanced, configuration and got ADB, and we're going to look for section. There you go, section 15. And it says, the first line is senseless homing. All right. If you ever want to configure senseless homing, know that Cheetah 5.0 actually takes care of all the inverting of end stops for you automatically. So if you want to define and enable senseless homing, please just enable it and that's all you need to do. For the firmware wise, of course, uh, we cannot advise how uh, senseless homing will work out on a mechanical uh, setup because there is a variety of available boards and different boards have different configurations with different drivers. So only enable senseless homing if you know what's going on and you know how to tune it. All right. Linear advance is enabled by default on Cheetah 5.0 and the default value is zero. All right. If you want to change this K value, there are tutorials on how to do it uh, on our Facebook uh, support group. If you, if you want to find it, you can join our support group or even if you have problems, Problems with Cheetah 5.0, you can join them. Alright, so section 15 is the last one. And before we hit the compile button, you just want to be sure that you you have everything in, in check. You have section 1A, that's where we define our board. Section 1B, that's where we define our display. Section 2, that's where we declare our drivers. And section 3, uh, it's a ender tree for this case. And of course, you have a custom printer, which is not uh, what we're doing. You have section 4. We chose our extruder and section 5 we chose our filament diameter 6 our extruder 7 a hot end and 8 the type of heater bit we're using and 9 oh 
we actually want auto bit level and we actually want face mounted probe kind of change our minds on here <laughs> all right and of course uh, we have defined we want a 16 read and we want multiple probing 10 is good we're going to ignore this code we have a custom abl mount which we have enabled remember and we want advanced pause we want to park it on the right and we want a total filament path of 200 and we want a sensor and we don't have to invert and that's that's all that's all guys all right so once you're done with this you can just hit the compile button right here the little check mark or little tick and vs code is just going to do the rest all right if you have followed the instructions from section 1 1a 1b all the way to section 15 the compilation should be smooth all right double check your settings uh if, if they are wrong or if you miss something the compilation will not work if you have followed all the steps uh, that we highlighted earlier on compilation shouldn't be uh, difficult all right it's our first time compiling it, it took uh, a little longer than usual but as long as it's green saying one succeeded uh, right here I'm sorry then it's fine all right so the next thing we should do in order for us to flash uh, our supported motherboard uh, in this case is to go back to your Marlin folder which you uh, have unzipped your file to uh, which is also the folder that we are working on right now all right and you go to the Marlin folder you're gonna find the dot pio folder all right you're gonna open it we've already opened it but you're gonna open it and then you're gonna look for build all right and then you're gonna see this folder right here right you should only be seeing one folder if you have your SKR board or if you have a FISEC board, this is going to be entirely different. Alright, you're going to see this board, you're going to double click on it, alright, and you're going to see firmware.bin. All these files here, it doesn't matter, only firmware.bin. Alright, so you're going to insert your SD card into your computer. Alright, so the next thing is you're going to drag firmware.bin, alright, into your SD card right here. So you're going to drag it in, and once the paste is complete, we are done. All right, so you're gonna remove your SD card from your machine, all right, whoops, and you're gonna put it onto your machine, and when that happens, you are going to observe a change in your boot screen if you have a 32-bit board and you will realize that Cheetah would have been successfully flashed. So if your SD card doesn't work, all right, you really wanna to go to custom codes in Cheetah and look for this, all right? SD card board fix. All right, what this does is that it forces the board to define an onboard function uh, for uh, SD. All right, it's an innate Marlin function, but we've decided to put it into configuration.h so that you can find it more easily under a section that we can control. And of course, if you have a TFT screen, for example, a TFT screen from, from Big Tree Tech, even. All right, those things come with uh, external SD card slots. If you want to be printing via those uh, those ports instead on the TFT machine, then you want to uncomment this, don't, don't have them both together, and you want to enable SD card LCD fix. All right, so that's that's all for Cheetah 5.0. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed the tutorial, and if this VS Code doesn't compile, remember, we have a debugging video which you can watch to check whether your codes are correct or to check whether VS Code is actually correct for you. Now, if nothing works out, you know, you 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 want to find help, I assure you that help is on the way. We are here to help. All right, you can always find help by joining our support group. You can find our support group channel uh, in the video description as well as on the compiling website. They are everywhere, not because we want you to spam our group, but it's because we genuinely want to help you compile Marlin, and this is why we made Cheetah 5.0. We know that the video is getting a bit long here, but that's... Uh, because we truly want you to benefit from what we have created so that everybody, uh, including you, who may or may not have been tra uh, having trouble compiling Marlin, we hope that uh, this, this video helps. And if you really cannot uh, understand or, or compile Marlin, please do reach out and uh, we'll try our best to, to help you out. Alright, so uh, that's all for this video. Uh, we hope to do another tutorial real quick. So if you've got any questions about Cheetah 5.0, the story of Cheetah 5.0, or even if you're a manufacturer or a board, or let's say if you uh, you 
you manufacture hot ends, uh, extruders, and you want Cheetah 5.0 to be integrated with uh, your data points, please reach out, please let us know, and I'll be more than happy to integrate uh, your data with, with Cheetah 5.0. Thank you very much for watching, and um, that's all. So I'll see you guys uh, soon. Take care.